From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big evening of Evenings LA Late for June 8th, 2022, with huge news tonight about your fourth stimulus check update of 2022, your stocks, your bonds, your economy, and your looming recession. In tonight's recording, we go over the latest details about why the economic downturn of this economy is so troubling as the stocks are down 1% today on the concern that the market is really loosening up. The housing market crash became more an issue tonight as data came in on those mortgage sales and they were down the worst numbers we've seen in 22 years. The stock market crash just starting and could potentially get worse as the situation continues to unfold. What is the situation? The situation tonight is that the, is that the labor market is really tightening up. Big layoffs expected by viewers of this channel as they see it in the big box retailers. We'll be going over that data tonight. Then the housing market, while it's down 17%, the breaking news tonight is that the mortgage numbers are down to the lowest levels from May 2022 of 22 years. That's breaking news tonight you're going to hear on this evening's broadcast. Next up, we have major developing details on a deal with oil. But would that deal on oil trade a situation for human rights? So I have the latest analysis in tonight's recording and my commentary as well. Then the storm out to sea. There's a storm out to sea and it's not good. It's the economic downturn of this U.S. economy. And what does it mean for you? It means that you need to get every check that's available. And in this recording tonight, guess what? I got a lot of checks for you. A four stimulus check in every U.S. state coming up in tonight's recording. Stay with me over this one hour broadcast. You're going to see the monster checks up to $80,000. You're not going to see anywhere else for you. If you're single, if you're married, if you rent, if you own, if you have children, if you don't have children in every U.S. state. Step one, subscribe to this channel. Step two, become a member. And step three, stay with me over this one hour broadcast. Next up, Build Back Better Act that will give you additional checks on top of this. Then we'll be going over the situation on that oil and what's going on with that student loan debt forgiveness. Meantime, bear market, what could it mean for you? And then later in this video, a commentary you've never seen before. It's all too new tonight. For June 8, 2022, from the shores of Santa Monica, California, let's get to America's most watch show for financial news in prime time. It starts right now with evenings. And good evening, everybody. It's a beautiful night here along the coast of Santa Monica, California. We have a four stimulus check now in every U.S. state. And later in this recording, we're going to go over that incredible check. You need it, you deserve it, and you should get it. Step one, watch this video and stay with me over this one-hour broadcast to get those incredible checks in every U.S. state. Step two, subscribe. And step three, become a member. In this incredible video, we're going to go over how to get those incredible checks for members. The membership link is under the video. Join right now and get that incredible information, the newsletter, Monday through Friday. We'll be going over more about that later in tonight's recording. But we start tonight with a lot of major developing details on all fronts. The major developing details on all fronts start with the economy. The Build Back Better Act, your stimulus, and where this economy is going. Over this next one-hour broadcast, we're going to go over where this economy is, where it's going, and also how to get big money today. What do we learn in new data released today? That 40% of Americans polled that had gotten stimulus previously over stimulus packages still have it saved. This is really what we're talking about with you. Because on this recording, I'm going to show you how to get big money to save it. Because in 90 days from now, this U.S. economy is going to be really in major shambles. And the next year, two years of recession starts. So you got to get big checks tonight and save them because the future of this economy in 90 days is not going to be what it is tonight. With that, those four stimulus checks in every U.S. state are going to come up later in this recording. But let's start with the other checks that could potentially come on top of them. They are the Build Back Better Act. A four stimulus recon done by Congress, different than the ones that I'm going to get to you later in this recording, and the negotiations currently underway in the Senate. 
between Joe Manchin, the Democrat out of West Virginia, and Chuck Schumer, the Democrat out of New York. Both individuals agree that they want to get you these checks before the midterm elections, that you need these checks, and that the checks would alleviate the financial pressures of the U.S. economy. Both individuals think that the checks would be coming and the solution would be happening. So let's go over the breaking news on these checks one at a time and why the statements from Janet Yellen changed everything. When you look at these incredible checks, we have three classes of checks and three add-ons. And the checks at issue, no less than a week ago, that we thought would fall out, are the checks that involve Medicare expansion and lowering Medicare or anything that involves funding more money into Social Security. This all changed just days ago when Janet Yellen, your Treasury Secretary, announced that she had a report that she was releasing, and she did release it, the first time we've seen this report in a generation. Janet Yellen releasing a report last Friday, the first time we saw this, last time we saw this was in 1982, that says that Social Security will not run out of money for 75 more years. This is a big one, folks. Why is this so important? Because the only provisions in the Build Back Better Act, with the exception of paid leave that Joe Manchin was against, are the provisions that he said would come from funding Medicare that's running out of money. Well, here we go. If it's not running out of money, then we could be in a really good position on the provisions in the Build Back Better Act negotiations. Let's look at those incredible checks in there. $15,000 to $80,000 of checks in the Build Back Better Act on top of the existing checks that I have for you later in this recording. There are three classes and three add-ons. The first add-on is $25,000 for the purchase of your first home. That provision would likely stay in there because the housing data is so poor. Well, how about that data later in this recording? The next add-on of checks is $250 billion of free home health care for seniors and people on disabilities. We thought that provision was in jeopardy because, of course, it is funded by expansion of Medicare. That's likely now to survive. And then the third add-on of checks is MSC. That is $2,000 the first month, $1,000 thereafter for up to six months. So says the legislators to tens of thousands of viewers of this channel since last year. That amounts to $7,000. Now, remember, when we talk about those MSCs in the Build Back Better Act, let's do a number comparison. That is a totality of $7,000. But the checks that I have for you lay this according are not $7,000. They are $80,000. That's why you have to stay with me later this recording because we have a lot more checks. Those four simple checks in every U.S. state right tonight that I'm going to get to you are upwards of $80,000, not $7,000. Don't forget to subscribe and become a member. We'll go to those checks later in this recording. Let's go back into that Build Back Better Act and look at the three clusters and see whether they would all survive or whether some provisions would fall apart. Let's look at what's at issue here and look at them one at a time. When you look at that first provision of checks, they are incredible. They are the hazard pay. One more year of the earned income tax credit established under third stimulus. Wow, that is wonderful. And now it'd be expanded for one more year, the EIC, about $1,500. Then beyond that money for my essential workers, we have the $4,000 of elder care, $4,000 to care for young children. Great, that would likely stay in there. The $12,500 for the purchase of a new electric vehicle would also likely stay in there. Then we also have the nutrition that would survive the home repairs, of course. Everything in that first cluster looks like it could survive. In that second cluster, everything in the second cluster is likely not to survive. Home repairs is already out. It's already a four stimulus check in every U.S. state. It's check A. It's coming up late in this recording. I'm going to show you how to get it. It's a monster check. $12,000. I'm going to show you how to get. Paid leave is not going to survive. Joe Manchin said he's not going to do it. It's definitely coming out. Then when we go to that third cluster checks, now everything may likely survive. Free and for all checks, sure. Farmers checks, yes. Independent contractors checks, yes. What about the seniors items? Well, if Joe Manchin certainly looks at what Jan Yellen wrote, then yes. Dental, surviving. Vision, surviving. Hearing, surviving. Lowering the eligibility age of Medicare from 65 to 55. And the Medicaid gap fix that provides a workaround plan in 12 Republican holdout states. All looking good if Joe Manchin reads what Janet Yellen wrote. And there you go. That is the Build Back Better Act that would give you fifteen dollars to $80,000 of incredible checks in the fourth stimulus out of Congress. Now, that fourth stimulus differs from this one. Later in this recording, we're going to go over the fourth stimulus checks now in every U.S. state. And I have them for you tonight now. How do I have them for you? 
because there's different ways to get stimulus. One is by Congress, the Build Back Better Act. The second is by the President, executive order. I got those checks for you right tonight. They're late in this according. The third is from the states, and I got those checks for you late in this according. If you haven't become a member, make sure you become a member right now. The other item that supports Build Back Better Act is weaker economic data. Whether you call it bad or poor or shrinking, that bad economic data tonight continues to magnify it across the board. And what is the breaking news on new data tonight that does not look good? It is, of course, the dog of the economy, the housing market. You, economists all agree that the worst part of this market, the financial markets right tonight, is the housing market. Over the last week, I've been showing you this graphic, 70% down housing sales year to date. But tonight, we have another number on top of that that's even worse. The data tonight shows that the mortgage obtained in the month of May were down 22%. Say it another way, the number of people requesting a mortgage in the month of May was down the worst drop that we've seen in 22 years. Let's go over the data tonight. When we look at housing and we look at the very bad market, we have to understand it's delayed sometimes, the data. Why? Because you go to buy a house, you go into contract to buy the house, and then you have a 90-day escrow, and then the house closes escrow. Well, the data that you're looking at may be delayed 90 days when you're looking at some financial data that's released by this economy. The data tonight is slightly delayed, and yet it's horrifically bad. The data released today showed that people were trying to get a mortgage in the month of May, three or four months after the mortgage rate started to surge up, was the lowest number in 22 years. Ouch. Here we go. The fixed 30-year mortgage rate in the United States economy grew dramatically since February. It was 3.2% in February. By April, it surged to 5.3%. That's a massive change. From April to May, it went from 5.3% to 5.4%. How bad of an impact was that on the buyer? Horrible impact. Housing ho Homes that went into mortgage in, for applications in the month of May fell 7% for the week before and 21% lower than the week one year earlier. So it's down 7% month to date, but 21% down year after year, year to date. Horrible. So housing sales are down 17% year to date for the month of May. Now we see mortgage applications were down 21% year to date. It continues to get worse. The analysis is exactly what you say. Joe, expect, Joe Kahn, MBA economist, says tonight, the purchase market has suffered from persistent low housing inventory and the jump in the mortgage rates over the past few months. The worsening affordability challenges have particularly had uh, bad problems with first-time home buyers. This is why you got to do the Build Back Better Act. The Build Back Better Act has an entire section in there about the home, whether you rent or you own. Homeowners, of course, you already saw the home repairs, the first-time home purchases, and then renters, they have their assistance in, well, in there as well. That is why Build Back Better Act is needed, and that's why Joe Manchin would likely do it. Housing is an example of how the downward spiral of this U.S. economy is being impacted by so many elements. Number one, Jay Powell's raising those interest rates has hurt the housing market. As he raises the interest rates at those FOMC meetings, the mortgage rates surge. So the reason why tonight's mortgage rates are at 5 and half percent is because he's had those interest rate spikes over the last few months, growing the mortgage rate from 3% to 5.5%. But how much worse is it going to get? Here you go. This is why you got to do the Build Back Better Act. The, the data tonight about how bad it's going to get is the following. My prediction for j Powell and those interest rate spikes is that he's going to do a half basis point at the June FOMC meeting just a few days from now. And then he's going to do another half and then another quarter. That would absolutely implode the housing market and throw you into a full recession. But we're not starting just there yet. There's other issues that are at hand, and that is why you need to get a forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. If you see an entire swath of the U.S. economy dropping dramatically, like the housing market, you got to pound to get every stimulus check available. But unfortunately, tonight, the housing market is not the only downward economy, downward part of this economy. The bear market as well. Stocks were rallying slightly initially today and then fell 1% on concerns that the downward spiral of this economy is here. The Dow was down about 300 points at uh, some part of the day, even though it was up initially. This came even on the news of good stocks reports today. 
some of the stocks had great corporate earnings before before sunrise. And that surged them in pre-dawn, pre-market trading. But by the time the market opened, oh, it was not the case. Let's go over the details tonight and what you need to know as the stock market crash of 2022 is following the housing market crash of 2022. The stock market crash of 2022 is another reason they got to do the Build Back Better Act because this economy is just getting worse by the minute. The stock market is now suffering a downward spiral of about 26% year to date. That's a bear market, but in a recession, or as you approach a recession, you'll be down 46%. We thought we were in the clear, at least some people thought, not me. <laughs> I said you're getting much worse the next few weeks. And yet you may have saw the good data before the day opened. Campbell Soups reporting great corporate earnings rallying up 3.5% before in the pre-market trading. We had Moderna. Posting great numbers, up 1.6% in the pre-market trading. Roku, the streaming platform, up 8.1% in the pre-market trading. It all looked good <laughs> until the day ended. When the day ended, the market was down dramatically. And again, another reason to do the Build Back Better Act. So many things that are not doing well in this economy as you look left and right and over and under. But the most pronounced example of why this economy is not doing well and why you have to do the Build Back Better Act is, of course, what you see and I see every day. And what you and I see, we see, the shortening up of the labor market. The labor market is a major issue that you and I and everyone understands. What's the labor market? Do people have jobs? Are people being laid off on jobs? Do you see less people having jobs? And this is where the U.S. economy is going, and this is where the Build Back Better Act is going. It's also where your stimulus is going. The number one most obvious situation to analyze the economy is employment. And throughout this entire saga of 2022, most people said, well, at least the labor market is really good. Tonight, the labor market's not good. I'm going to need your help in a second to get ready in the live chat, get your fingers ready and loosened up, because I want you to jump in the live chat and answer a series of questions. But let me tell you what's going on. Analysts have been saying for the last week or two that the labor market's really good despite the rest of the market. I don't agree. And what have they said? Well, people aren't really losing their jobs. There's a lot of jobs out there that's hard to get workers. That the labor market's strong. Untrue, untrue, untrue is what my analysis has been saying. Let me go over the data with you first, and then let's interact in the live chat. The data tonight is the following. One. 200,000 new unemployment claims last Thursday. We're going to see the number again tomorrow morning, live on air on Mornings LA. That's a horrible number. It should not be 200,000 new jobless claims per week. These are people newly on unemployment. That's a bad number. Last Friday, we learned why the number was so high. Because the jobs came from people who work from small business owners. And they said, we're closing our doors. So not only was there a loss of, of employment, but there was a loss of businesses across the the country in the last week. We'll see how bad that number is tomorrow. If it's over 180,000, it's not good. Number two, the non-farm payroll creation jobs for the month of May released last week was also a very bad miss. It was supposed to come in close to 300,000 new jobs created. It came in less than a 40% of that number. What a horrible miss. And then we have the corporate guidance. Now, the corporate guidance is very important when you're understanding your stimulus, your money, your job, and your future economy. What are we looking for? We're looking for guidance on words like, we have too many employees. Uh, we don't see a lot of purpose for all these employees. That's the wording you would likely see now in Q1 or Q2 corporate earnings. Because what are you going to see by the end of this year? We're laying you off. We're laying you off. And what you can see in 2023, we're not only laying you off, we're putting a hiring freeze on, which means we're not hiring you. It started a month ago when Walmart reported corporate earnings that said we have too many employees on the floor. They didn't announce major layoffs formally, but I asked viewers, have you seen it? And here we go. Get your fingers ready. If I'm going to ask you two questions, and I have two possible answers for both of them. And let's see your reaction and see if it's the same reaction we've seen in the last few weeks. Question number one, when you go in the big box retailer this week, do you see less or more employees when you go to checkout to pay your goods? When you go to the checkout to pay for your items in the big box retailer or small scale retailer, do you see less employees or more employees? Less or more are the two possible answers. Jump in the live chat and write less or more. Viewers over the last two weeks have 
unanimously said less or zero. Yeah, they say they go to check out and they actually don't see any employees. And they said, no, a month ago it would have been two, three, four employees, and now it's down to less or zero. Jump on the live channel right less or more right now. Second question for you tonight is, do you hear yes or no? Your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues saying they've been laid off from their jobs. Viewers overwhelmingly have said yes. They've heard of people being laid off, and they're not getting jobs really quickly across the board. This is why that data point that started tonight's recording, that 40% of Americans still have saved up money from the prior stimulus package is so important. But that's why this graphic on screen is also so important. This graphic came in last Saturday when Elon Musk, head of Tesla, made the first major announcement of this kind that I'm recording on this channel. Corporate layoffs and corporate freezes, hiring freezes. He said, 10% of you can stay home. I don't need you anymore. We're worried about the downward spiral of this economy, and we're putting a hiring freeze on the door. Don't hire any more people. Ouch. This is the type of language you see when you go in recession, but we're not in recession. This is my concern for you. So what is my takeaway, and what have you and I said collectively as a family, Purple Power community on this channel, is that your data is more accurate than what Wall Street's reporting. If you see less employees in the store, there's less employees in the store. They haven't, they haven't just taken a, a vacation. They're not, they've been laid off. Less employees in the store means less means they've been laid off, means that may, they may not have gotten to claiming unemployment assistance. Basically, the takeaway is the data that Wall Street has is imperfect data. It's time delayed. It's probably three weeks, four weeks, a month, or two months delayed till we really see how bad the labor market is. And that is why you have to get a forced to most check in every U.S. state. Later through the corner, we're going to go over what's going to happen in the next 90 days, but I'm going to give you a preview of it right now. The preview of it is that there's going to be a tsunami. There's going to be a tsunami for people asking for stimulus because the downward spiral of this economy is going to be so pronounced. And that is before we even go into next year. As we go into next year, the situation will be even more uh, troubling. And that is what Ellen and Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan both say. Storm out to sea, I say. He says, hurricane down the road. As the industries of the American economy continue to contract, as the recession is on the horizon, as I reported, or the downward spiral of the U.S. economy, as others say it, is happening, this means that the situation is going to get worse by the minute. What do you do? You don't wait. You don't wait to get stimulus. Because if there's stimulus available tonight, you get it right away. In nine days from now, people are going to say, I got laid off. Where is my PUA, my FPUC, my LWA, my PPP? Or I lost my business. Where's that EIDL grant, that EIDL loan? Do you have more about that from me, LA? I don't. The four stimulus items that are at issue tonight are not mirroring exactly what we had for first or second stimulus. So you need to get these checks tonight because they're monster checks. They are monster checks. And later in this recording, I'm going to show you that with the recession coming next year, I do not know if there will be a recession stimulus next year. That is why you have to get those four stimulus checks that are available in every U.S. state tonight. You cannot wait. You need to get the checks right across the board. Now, let's go over some of the other breaking news stories before we go over these four stimulus checks after the commercial break. The other breaking news stories tonight are the following. One, more uh, is the student loan debt for Guinness. Student loan debt for Guinness has really gotten to a dead end. And so I'm not going to really cover too much more on this recording, I'm gonna, on this channel. I'm going to tell you why. Student loan debt forgiveness has a position for the White House, and that position has not changed for over a year and a half. And that position is basically going to be announced, and we will be done with the story. I believe that the president is going to announce $10,000 of student loan debt forgiven for everyone, and it's, the announcement is going to come sometime between now and September, and that will be the end of the story. Barack Esme is trying to really milk the story by running... Five people met with the White House asking for 50000 20 people met with the White House asking for 50000 The same story over and over again. It's not going to change because he's not said anything but $10,000. Here's what I need you to do if you are a student borrower of a federal debt. First, look and see if you qualify for any of the forgivenesses of the following. One, did you become disabled after graduation? Then your debts are forgiven. If you went to work in the public sector, your debts are forgiven. Nonprofit sector, your debts are forgiven. If your debt was created by fraud by the university against you, your debts are forgiven. Moreover, look up the following words, EIDR credit, public service loan forgiveness, and the income-based loan forgiveness at the Department of Education's website. 
Go to the Department of Education's website, open their press releases, go down in them, and read all of them in the last month. Miguel Cardona, Education Secretary to Joe Biden, has made very clear. He wants to take the statutes and modify them so more of you qualify for debt forgiveness under the statute by using some of the provisions, like IDR credit, public service loan, and the income-based credit. There you go. Now, the other issue at hand tonight is the oil. When we look at that situation for oil, where are we tonight and where could it be coming? Later this recording, we're going to go over my narrative and my commentary on this oil debacle. I have a big commentary you've never heard before on this channel, and it's brand new. It's coming up later tonight. But before I go into that commentary, I want to just tell you where this news is tonight on the oil and gasoline front that you're paying at the pump. First, the price of gasoline tonight for June 8th, 2022, is the highest level I have ever reported in the history of this channel. Yes, the price of gasoline has gone up dramatically since Memorial Day weekend. It was going up before Memorial Day weekend, but it was relatively stagnant in the month of May. In the last few days uh, since Memorial Day weekend, it has surged out of control. Let me tell you where we are tonight. International price of Brent crude is now at 121 a barrel. It was 120 yesterday, a few days before that. It was 117 for almost two weeks. So it has jumped up about $4 in just a few days. Number two, the price of gasoline at the pump in the United States has really risen a lot since Memorial Day weekend. And where is that tonight? It was 440 460 before Memorial Day weekend. Then it went to 470 then to 480 and last night it was 490 It's likely to be $5 by tonight. That's a major move in just a few days. Why is this happening and what is happening with the White House? First, let me tell you why is it happening. It's happening because the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend, the Western allies finally, after months of negotiations, banned Russian oil. That banning of Russian oil took that Russian oil out of the equation for the Western allies, finally. Even though they had been talking about it since March, it was not solidified until last, that last Sunday. Number two, the country of China has come off of a lockdown. And coming off of a lockdown, they're back driving their cars. So the shortage has now increased as their consumption has now increased. How high could the gasoline go? I've been reporting on this channel for several weeks. The price of gasoline, you're paying the pump. You may think it's high now at $5 a, a, a domestic unleaded in the United States, or at least in Los Angeles, $7. I'm predicting it could go to $10. But is a solution at hand? There is a solution. The Western allies can get gasoline from a series of places, Venezuela, Brazil, UAE, OPEC Plus, or Saudi Arabia. Later in this recording, we'll go over what the president is or isn't doing with Saudi Arabia and my commentary on the human rights issue. It's a brand new so subject you've never seen before. It's coming up later in this recording. Meantime, with all these changing issues, with the downward spiraling of all these parts of this economy, and the wait on the Build Back Better Act at least a couple more weeks, you need to get those forcible checks in every U.S. state. What are you waiting for? The pressure on your pocket may be severe right now, but it's just getting started because in 90 days from now, it's going to be a lot worse. What do you do and how do you get these forcible checks in every U.S. state? Step one, subscribe to this channel. Go right on this video and hit the subscribe button. Step two, become a member. The join link is under the video. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. And then get that incredible newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, written by me, delivered to you via the YouTube alerts. In it, it features all the incredible money of those four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. And finally, stay to the second half as we go over these incredible checks. Then stay with me to the final minutes of this video for a commentary you've never seen. It's a big night for Evenings LA. We're just getting started. For June 9th, 9, 2022, a lot still coming up, including those big checks. But first, here's a little bit about the members' community page. As America's most watched show for financial news in prime time continues tonight. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, 
food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. Home LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. And the excitement continues right now in a big second half of Evening's LA for June 9, 2022. Hope you're doing wonderful. A force stimulus check is now in every U.S. state. And in the second half of this video, we're going to go over that incredible check. We're going to go over how you get it, who gets it, how you receive it, and what will be happening thereafter. It's a big second half. Plus, stay with me to the very end. You can see a commentary you've never seen before. It's about your stimulus. Good evening. How you doing? I <laughs> hope you're having a great day. And thank you for interacting me with me in that live chat about unemployment earlier. I'll see your, I'll need your interaction in just a second on another subject matter. A forced stimulus check is in every U.S. state, and I found it for viewers of this channel back in March of 2022. Viewers understand that this channel is different. I do three things on this channel. I, find, I report the state of this U.S. economy. I tell you where the economy is going, and then I also get you money. It's different than reporting the money. I actually get you, show you how to get this incredible stimulus. Let's go over what happened in March. Viewers said, Build back better act. If they haven't gotten it done, LA, can you find us a stimulus check? And I looked high and low, and finally I found it. A forced stimulus check in every U.S. state, and boy, great news, because you generally eligible for it. Eligibility is so important when you're looking at stimulus. Here is the eligibility for the stimulus I'm about to go over. Single individual, $75,000 or less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less annual income, go get it. If you rent, if you own, go get it. If you're on benefits like SSI, SSDI, VARB, go get it. Have children, don't have children, go get it. And we're going to go over all these incredible checks one at a time, and then I have my commentary coming right after that. The first check is astronomical. When I get people checks, I want to get you big checks. So you have financial independence, not small checks of a couple hundred dollars, big checks of tens of thousands of dollars. And the first check is huge. $6,500 to $12,000, I call it check A. And that incredible check A is $6,500 to $12,000. It is a forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. Let's look at it right now. That check is astronomical. Single individual, $75,000 or less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less, go get it. It is called the Homeowner's Weatherizing Grant Check. And if you're on benefits, go get it as well. How do you get this incredible check? Step one, subscribe to this channel. Step two, become a member. The link under the video where it says join here, become a member. Step three, open that member newsletter delivered by me to you Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alert system. Go down in that membership newsletter and there it says check A. Click here and it tells you the link to go right in and apply. You'll be routed to the national website, then choose the state, then choose the homeowner's weatherizing grant and apply. And you are done, but not done overall, <laughs> just with check A. Then you're going to get check B. Go right in and get that one as well. Fifteen dollars to $80,000. Look at this astronomical check. I don't play around here, folks. I'm here to get you big financial independence by getting the most stimulus you can get. And I got in view is upwards of $200,000, $300,000 a person. I'm not here for $600 checks. No one is going to be able to survive indefinitely on $600 or any long period of time. These are monster checks. These are for single individuals, $75,000 or less, married couple, $150,000 or less. SSI, SSDI, average check being paid out is $66,000 to $80,000. How do you get check B? You know the routine. Step one, subscribe. Step two, become a member. Join this channel, Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. Step three, get that incredible newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 
via the YouTube alerts and go right in and go down to check B where you see it and pounce. Get that incredible check B application in. But you're not done there yet? Nope. You are going to go get that check C as well. Check C is a wonderful MSC check of $2,000 a month for 12 months on average. My renters and homeowners. Many viewers are averaging $45,000, but yes, I've gotten viewers over $200,000 from Check C. It is for rent, utilities, mortgage assistance, and more. And I've been doing this, and you've been getting it on this channel since December 2020. That's not yesterday. That's a big track record of success you have delivered. Let's look at the success stories you have delivered since the earliest days of December 2020. In December 2020, viewers said, Elliot, do you have some checks for me? And I said, no, I don't have anything. Uh, they said, you got to find me some checks. They haven't gotten that second stimulus done. So I looked high and low, and I found what I call purple at the time. This money, which eventually became third stimulus and then became check C. And what happened? Well, viewers got what they could get at the time because there wasn't a lot of money. It was December 2020, the thick of the pandemic. It was the winter, and heating oil was out of control. But what they really got was also the training of this channel. They got trained by me how to get this money. This is an educational channel as well. And I train people how to get these sums of money. A lot of people have never picked up the phone and called for anything. This took a lot of training and viewers did well at the time. There wasn't a lot of money. But the great element in December 2020 was I had a piece of document of what was going to be proposed piece of legislation. I called it third stimulus. And I said, if this becomes law, you're going to be trained. You're going to already know how to do this. The only difference is there'll be a lot more money. And we all got very lucky. It became law. And then when it became law, I said, here you go. You know how to do this. You've been doing this for a few months now. Go get this big money. I think you can get 15000 You got on average $45,000. And Johnny and his friends getting over $800,000. It's not an anomaly. It's a success story of you as the Purple Power community. Let's look and see what you did at the time and what people are still doing to this day. These incredible success stories started with people who understood the importance of pouncing and getting these big sums of money. Purple Hawk swirling, Purple Hawk bouncing, getting these big sums of money. Let's look at the success stories that started with the rent at the time. The rent was twenty dollars to $30,000 that people got for this incredible sums of money in December 2020, and then starting even bigger in early 2021. Nisi going from 20,000 all the way up to other viewers like uh, Elizabeth at twenty thirty thousand dollars $30,000. The success stories continued thereafter as people got for SNAP upwards of $15,000 like Mark's brother-in-law. Then when we looked at the numbers for, ut for uh, utilities, even more across the board. Numbers kept on coming on in. Let's see how it eventually ended. It eventually ended with monster success stories like this. Nisi, 23000 at the time. Mark, 32000 at the time. Nancy, 32000 at the time. But all those viewers heard me say, do not stop. And none of them ever stopped. Nisi gets about $8,000 every few weeks. She's in the live chat every night on Evenings Out Late. She's upwards of 50000 right now. Mark never stopped. He heard me. He went from 32000 to 50000 to 100000 to 166000 Lorraine never stopped. She was at 105. She went to 120. Now she keeps on getting more money. She's about 130, 140,000. How do you get that incredible check C in your state? Step one, subscribe. Step two, become a member. And then go down in the membership newsletter to where you see check C. And when you see check C, it gives you the details of who to call, what to say, and how to say. You're going to make about 15 phone calls and pounce across the board. It all starts with becoming a member and doing the incredible effort across the land. Here's a couple of new takeaways tonight that I want you to grasp as well. Number one, the membership newsletter is delivered Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So remember, if you're not on the West Coast, adapt to the time zone. If you're the East Coast, it's 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time that's delivered. If you're Central Standard Time, it's 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. Second, make sure you have that little bell at the front of this channel hit there's a bell on the channel. Make sure you have it hit and make sure its notifications are set to all on. Additionally, what's important for you to know is you need to really hoard money. The downward spiral of this U.S. economy is very much a point upon us right now. And as the economy gets tighter and the economy gets weaker, more people are going to ask for stimulus. That's what I call stimulus stampede. 
It's important to understand that if you only found this channel recently, or you're not watching this channel when it launched in April 2020, then things may have changed and you didn't see what they were initially. Initially, when the first stimulus became a law, I helped people on this channel get EIDL grants of $10,000, EIDL loans of upwards to $200,000, PPPs of $100,000, and even FPUC UI on average about $20,000. Yeah, it was a lot of money. If you were one of those people who got a $600 stimulus check and thought that's the life that you're going to live, that was never the focal point of this channel because $600 ain't going to allow you to live. You need massive sums of money, especially not now, but in 90 days from now as this economy downturns. That's why you need stimulus that's tens of thousands of dollars. And these checks are in every U.S. state. Go get them tonight. Moreover, what's important to understand is I don't know what's going to happen in 2023 for this economy and this administration. I can tell you that this economy will be horrific in 2023. And I'm telling you it's going to be a recession. If it's not a recession, it's going to look as bad as a recession. But I certainly do not know if the administration will do a stimulus package for a recession. That's why for weeks on end, months on end, I've been telling you, the storm's out to sea. Get the money right now. Get as much of the money as possible and keep it. Save it. That's why a major new report released today says that 40% of Americans who got stimulus from the prior stimulus packages still have it saved up. Why? Because they understand the importance of saving the stimulus as a situation could be worse. And that situation will be worse. The reason why the stock market was down 1% today was because people think the doom and gloom of this U.S. economy has not even started. It hasn't started. 90 days from now is when it's going to start. And I don't want you to be focused on the words like recession or not. I just want you to know it's going to be bad. That's why you got to get every check that's available. Now, the downward spiral in the U.S. economy will be felt in many ways. Employment, so you're going to worry about that FPUC, PUA, and UI. It doesn't exist anymore, or at least in the form we saw it in 2020. Business shuttering, I have no idea. I have no idea loan either for you. And then all the other concerns you have across the board. Those items will be very pronounced and also more pronounced is the problem on the gasoline. The problem on the gasoline is that there is no inherent deal yet on the gasoline at the time of tonight's recording. And so let me tell you where gasoline is tonight and also give you my commentary on the situation. The situation tonight on the gasoline is that it's very bad, the worst numbers we've ever seen on the price of gasoline on this channel. When I said it couldn't go any worse than it was in May, now in June it's a lot worse and we're just getting started. Ouch, how bad is it going to get, LA? It will go to $10 a gallon in Los Angeles. It will go to $10 a gallon in many states if no deal is done really quickly. Why? Because the Western Allies banned the Russian oil that Sunday Memorial Day weekend, and China's off a of lockdown. And as more consumption continues, there's more shortage. The price goes up. So do we have the opportunity to get a deal? We do have an opportunity to get the deal. The opportunities are Venezuela, Brazil, and OPEC Plus, and, and Saudi Arabia. Of those groups... Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, and Brazil are all subject to embargoes by the United States because of human rights violations. Iran is also the subject of embargo, but because of nuclear proliferation. All those countries would work, but we've had to make a decision, and we haven't made the decision. So what is the latest news tonight? The latest news tonight is the president is confirmed to be going to Saudi Arabia in just a few days. Why? The White House confirms that the White House is trying to bridge its diplomacy with Saudi Arabia after it really tried to say much the opposite during the prior administration. When Joe Biden ran for president of the United States, he lambasted uh, President Trump for really taking his first international diplomacy trip to Saudi Arabia. Now, that's exactly where Joe Biden's going. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. What's complicated tonight is we need oil. We need oil. And we have waited too long to get the oil replacement. And it's not just us, the Western allies and the United States need oil, a lot of it. We cannot produce enough here to supply the missing oil. How much missing oil? 2.5 million barrels a day at least. And the options I just went over all work, but we haven't solidified any deal. Here's the situation tonight. To do a deal with Venezuela, you have to lift embargoes for human rights. To do a deal with Saudi Arabia, you have to lift a deal, you have to lift an embargo for, Saudi, for uh, human rights. To do a deal with Brazil, you have to lift an embargo that is a bond for human rights. 
And ultimately, this is going to look very peculiar. The commentary coming out just minutes before this broadcast tonight is exactly what you thought. Congressional leaders, both Democrats and Republicans, are saying they're not happy with the concept of going to Saudi Arabia to ask for the oil because they're a human rights violator. But the problem is we have very few choices left because everyone else has an embargo against them for a similar type of issue. At the time of tonight's recording, for June 9th, 2022, we do not have confirmation from the White House that the trip to Saudi Arabia will involve talks about oil. We do have confirmation there's a trip, but we do not have confirmation that the talks will involve oil. Many of the congressional leaders, both Democrats and Republicans, say it will involve oil. And here is where it's getting interesting tonight. Your wallet is dependent upon oil. You need to get that oil back into circulation. If we don't get the oil back into circulation very quickly, and I got to tell you, very quickly, then there could be major economic turmoil in the United States. I told you the price of gasoline needs to be solved in May, unsustainable in May. We are in June, and the situation is very, very dire. This situation of gasoline will implode the housing market, implode the auto industry, implode travel and leisure, it will implode industry after industry, hurt labor as well. If you don't get it under control, and the only way you get it under control is actually getting the oil. Which brings me to my commentary tonight. My commentary tonight on Evening to LA is that when you're dealing with the situation of oil, you're dealing with Saudi Arabia. And when you're dealing with the situation of Saudi Arabia, guess what you're also dealing with? A similar situation that has dominated news over the last week. In this week alone, the subject of Saudi Arabia and doing business with Saudi Arabia or United Arab Emirates has dominated no less than three major news stories at the same time. The first one we just went over. We're going to Saudi Arabia potentially to ask for gasoline. Should we when they are a human rights violator? Number two, tomorrow morning starts one of the most important golf tournaments of a generation. It's called the inaugural event for LIV, or L-I-V. This is the new golf circuit funded and approved and run by the Saudi Fund. And when it was initially announced by Greg Norman and, and Phil Mickelson, the commentary against Mickelson and Norman was, how dare you do business with the Saudis for a golf tournament? When that golf tournament starts tomorrow, these are the names that are associated with the circuit who have now defected from the PGA. They are Phil Mickelson, Dustin Johnson, and others like um, Matt Jones, others that are also considering the move that include Bryson DeChambeau, Patrick Reed, a reportedly defecting according to ESPN, and Ricky Fowler has reportedly been linked to the organization to, to the move. And this is a organization, a circuit that is funded by the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund. Also making news tonight is a new Real Housewives show aired by Bravo in its second week. The new Real Housewives show is set in United Arab Emirates. And in that show, which is supposed to be a reality TV show, it says that women control the town and that they are the dominant force. Not so, says human rights uh, organization, says that that country, United Emirates, is a very big human rights violator, especially against women. Three stories, the same three situation. Doing business with the, in, 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 in the United Arab Emirates for a reality show, but not depicting the human rights violations. Doing business with the Saudis for a golf tournament, but also doing it in a way in which we are not saying anything about the human rights violations. And finally, going to the Saudi Arabian government to get oil to solve the problems of our economy while we're also dealing with the human rights violations issues on the sideline. The question in the commentary tonight is how do you do this and yet not forget the issues of human rights? My commentary tonight is that human rights is very important. Human rights is very important and you cannot forget human rights. But in running a country, you also have to understand that you cannot embargo everyone. And what have we done? We've basically embargoed every partner out of the supply chain for oil. We embargoed Venezuela, we embargoed Brazil, we embargoed Iran, and we embargoed Saudi Arabia. Was that ever a good idea to embargo every supplier for oil at the time and leave no one as an option? No, it was never a good idea. The next question is, why as a society should we sit on social media 
and continually posts negative comments about, uh, about Phil Mickelson when, as a society, we're going to Saudi Arabia to get oil. We don't want to go to Saudi Arabia to do golf, but we want to go to Saudi Arabia to get oil. It's important as a society that we have to take focus on what we're doing at the same time. And we should not pigeonhole and think we're only doing it here and that's the only situation. The truth of the matter tonight is we are doing two major deals with Saudi Arabia if Joe Biden signs that deal of oil. We are doing a deal as a country, as a public entity, with Saudi Arabia for oil. And then we're doing business on a private sector as golfers independently, private citizens, are doing private deals with the Saudi government for a new Saudi circuit of golf. And then and one necker is doing a deal, is doing filming in the United Arab Emirates without saying any commentary about its human rights violations. Ultimately, where is the moral compass? It's up to you to decide. And jump in the live chat and tell me what you should do, what you think we should do. Should we get the oil from Saudi Arabia? And if we don't, where else will we get the oil? I'll remind you one last time. We as a country cannot produce enough oil to supply the missing gasoline. We cannot import enough oil from uh, Alaska to replace the missing gasoline. We have to get it from one of the major producers, and that is Venezuela, Brazil, OPEC+, plus, UAE, or Saudi Arabia. There's very few choices about where we can get that much gasoline per day for the entire Western allies. So what do you think we should do? Jump in the live chat. I'd love to see your commentary as well. And with that, finally, one last message, which is be inspirational to other people. It's so important to understand that this economy is going to be very bad in 90 days from now. As a community, as a family, we have to come tighter and closer together. That tightness and closer together involves everything from talking about banana bread to saying congratulations for someone who got $100 for his rent check last, month, last night. That coming closer together involves everything from saying hello to someone in the live chat to saying congratulations, you got $300 for utilities. That tightness breeds positivity. That tightness breeds inspiration. And that inspiration breeds success stories. Nowhere in this landscape should we be saying things like, there's no money in Arizona. There's no money in Mississippi. There's no money in Kentucky. It's untrue. It's untrue and untrue. That type of narrative has to go away. Because ultimately, if that's what you're saying now, which is incorrect in the month of June, imagine what you're going to be saying in 90 days from now. Imagine what you're going to be saying in the 2023 recession. As a community, we need to be tight now as a family, tight now to get every check available, tight now as Purple Power members to get this money together as a family. Because when this economy gets worse, we will have one another as a family to lean on. And with that, from the shores of Santa Monica, California tonight, God bless. Step one, subscribe and become a member. Step one, subscribe. Then go under the viewer, under the video and hit that join button, become a member. Get every check you can get from this channel tonight in that membership newsletter. Then go back and do it again and get a check again. Keep on getting checks like Nisi, Market, Mark, uh, and other viewers like Lorraine. Keep on getting those checks because the downward spiral of this U.S. economy in 90 days from now ain't going to look good. As a family, we will be tighter than ever and ready to endure all that and more. Stay informed, stay focused, have a beautiful night, and stay with Allies for more.